In this video, I will be analyzing the welfare of the giraffes at the Como Park Zoo and Conservatory. The zoo is mainly run on donations by the public and federal money, which really limits the amount they can expand their zoo to adequately support the space allowances and enrichment provided to the animals. This is very evident in Como Park's giraffe exhibit, which includes their indoor and outdoor habitats. To analyze the welfare of giraffes, I will be using the three spheres as discussed by David Fraser in 1997. These spheres include biological functioning, the effective states, and the natural living of the animal. All three spheres should be used in order to ensure the best welfare for the animal. Reliance on a single sphere, such as biological functioning, can cause oversights in the behavior and mental needs of the animal. When analyzing the Como Park Zoo, I began with the housing systems for the giraffe. Foremost, both exhibits were too small in order to adequately achieve their natural behavior to roam and forage, which can cause boredom or frustration. They spend the majority of their time in the indoor enclosure because Minnesota does have long and harsh winters, which cause unsuitable temperatures below 50 degrees, where the giraffes can no longer be allowed outdoors according to Jolly 2003. Furthermore, each habitat does not provide hiding spaces for the animal in order for the animal to escape the stresses that are associated with the zoo, such as noise and sudden movement of the visitors, according to Bacon. A shelter would protect the giraffe from weather conditions because they are particularly vulnerable to a drop in temperature accompanied by rain and strong winds. As due to having such a large body surface, it is difficult for them to find shelter from wind, according to Kloss et al., 1999. In terms of substrate, the outdoor enclosure does provide the dry sandy surface which is ideal for hoof health, but the steep slope is not good for the giraffe according to Jolly 2003. The slope can cause injuries due to slipping, especially if it is raining and the visitor feeding time is occurring because the giraffes are more anticipatory to go towards the people. The flooring in the indoor enclosure is adequate because it is textured and level, which will decrease the incidences of slips and falls. Despite this, they only provide one rubber, rubber mat to lie down with no substrate for these giraffes, which is needed for proper resting, according to Genios, 1993. Finally, the air quality in the indoor enclosure had a very high ammonia level, which can make the animals uncomfortable and result in some respiratory issues if the problem persists. According to Kingdon, 1984, the giraffe's hearing and sense of smell are very sensitive. That would indicate that the possible loud noises reverberating off a small space, or the various odors may be abrasive to the giraffes as they live in the indoor enclosure. As a simple visitor to the zoo, I do not know how long the giraffes are kept in their display pen, which are very small, or whether the other accommodations behind the pens are larger with more hiding spaces and lying spaces for these giraffes. I would need more information to fully understand and assess their housing situation at the zoo. The zoo did not release this information to the public, and I have never seen a zookeeper in the giraffe area who could possibly answer my questions. In terms of behavior, the giraffe does not have much room to roam, which is a highly motivated behavior to the giraffe due to their normal home range of 160 to 650 kilometers square of space, according to Estes 1991. Which is nice. Despite this, the only stereotypy that I witnessed on my trips to the zoo was an oral stereotypy. This is most likely connected to their diet because the giraffe spends the majority of its time foraging in the wild. The Como Zoo did provide the giraffes with hay on the backs of the walls of the enclosure, which will promote more foraging behaviors and reduce the amount of stereotypies according to Baxter 2001. These types of stereotypies have been seen in wild giraffes and is most likely connected to social tension or improper rumination according to Vassal et al. 1996. To try and counteract some of the stereotypies due to boredom, the keepers did provide some enrichment items to keep the mouth and tongue occupied, which is very important for rumination of the giraffe. For example, they used buckets and balls with treats inside that the giraffe had to work at in order to receive the treat. The enrichment was not always successful, such as with this ball, as seen in the video, because the holes are too small for the giraffe to reach in with its tongue, which could cause more frustration that is counteracted by the object, which was meant to decrease frustration. Due Furthermore, to the zoo constructed a very fancy metal tree in the outdoor enclosure that acts as a feeder, but it does not really add anything for the giraffe because it is mostly just for aesthetics. Although it helps in fulfilling their forage drive, it does not provide them with a variety of foraging materials which would increase mental elasticity and curiosity, according to Young 1998. In terms of their social interactions, giraffes are actually semi-solitary animals because they are aloof in their social interactions, 
They do form herds, but they're very loose. They are very unstable and often switch members. They are also not normally in the same area unless they're feeding from the same tree. They are happy as long as they have visual contact with one another, according to Jolly 2003. This would be difficult in the fairly enclosed habitat they are, that they are provided. The first time I went to the zoo, there was only one giraffe in the enclosure, but he could see and touch noses with the other giraffes. This would better reflect their natural separation, but it's not necessarily always achievable in the outdoor enclosure because there's not as much hiding spaces, they can't get away, but it is slightly bigger so they can- The other time I went to Kamo Zoo, there was three giraffes in the small indoor enclosure, which resulted in cramped living and possibly more stress due to the inability to get away from one another. As a visitor of the zoo, I did not see any keepers interacting with the giraffes in any manner, which would be important in determining the animal's flight zone around humans. This can indicate the handling techniques used in order to invoke a certain behavior either of running away from the handlers or readily approaching them. As stated by Temple Grandin in 1998, animals are easier to manage and direct when they are handled in a positive manner without stress or fear. An aversive handling technique would cause larger flight zones of the giraffe with the keeper. Despite this, the keeper did provide enrichment for the animals and the habitats were fairly clean, which indicates good hygiene for the animals. Despite this, some of the enrichment was not working for the animals, such as the ball, as I stated before. The keepers should monitor the giraffes when they are introduced to a new enrichment in order to assess the usefulness of the object. The object itself is not considered enrichment just by being present in the enclosure. The animal must actually interact with the item on numerous occasions in order for it to be a successful item of enriching that animal. In terms of their health, bite marks were present on the giraffe, which could be self-inflicted due to frustration or boredom. It could be an indication of aggression between the giraffes. As stated before, the giraffes are slightly solitary and not accustomed to staying in the same herd in that small space, which may result in social tension and aggressive bites. Other than that, there are no other outward signs of lameness on the giraffes, but I would need a full medical record assessment to make that full judgment on their welfare in terms of health. The nutrition of the giraffe appeared adequate, but I do not know what the Como Zoo exactly feeds their animals. It may be a concentrate diet or a mixture of forage. A concentrate diet would be more would not be ideal for the giraffe. They need to have some roughage because as according to Jolly 2003, the giraffe normally spends half its time browsing for food, which could cause stereotypies due to boredom or frustration and not being able to perform that behavior. The Como Zoo did provide their giraffes with some roughage and sacks, but I do not know how much they are allotted each day, which could be the re reason behind the stereotypic wall licking, as seen in the giraffes. In the PowerPoint slides, the zoo claims that the behavior is a method for the giraffe to fully ruminate, although some air licking can be seen in wild populations, according to Vassie et al. 1996. It is most likely due to improper housing size and a feed concentrate used in the diet, instead of completely aiding in the rumination of the giraffes as the PowerPoint slides suggested. When we discuss the welfare of the giraffes at the Como Zoo, we need to remember that this zoo is donation-based. It does not make an enormous amount of money that can be returned to the facility in order to improve its habitats. The Como Zoo has improved slightly over the years, and they continue to work through each big habitat in order to make them bigger and more enriching for the animals. The zoo has done a few things to the outdoor giraffe exhibit, but they have mostly been aimed at visitors instead of giraffes. That's why they now have a feeding station for the visitors and a giant metal tree. I suggest that the zoo improves numerous areas of the giraffe enclosure in order to improve the effective states and natural living of the giraffes. In the indoor and outdoor enclosures, they need to add more hiding spaces for the giraffes. This in could include planting trees into the enclosure, which could also double as more enrichment for the giraffes because it's something they can eat. The trees would need to be replaced every few years because they'll decimate the trees after a while, but it would be a feasible option for the exhibit that may happen relatively quickly. Or they could build a shelter for the animal that is big enough for them to actually hide behind, which could be more expensive. Furthermore, the zoo needs to monitor the enrichment for the giraffes in order to ensure that the giraffe is actually using the item and it's not causing more frustration. Moreover, they should try to introduce a wider variety of enrichment because I almost always see the ball being used in the exhibit. This is a short-term option that may improve the giraffe's mental state immensely. Finally, the giraffe should be provided with more space in both the indoor and outdoor enclosure. 
This would be a huge financial cost for the zoo because they may not have the space to expand the habitat. Despite this, the giraffes could have access to their runs behind the main exhibits while they're on display. This would give them more control over their environment and decrease some of the animal stress because they can escape visitors behind there. Visitors cannot really see back there, so they have that option. The ideal option would be to give them free access to the outdoor habitat, but the winter temperatures are unsuitable for giraffes and the ice can be extremely dangerous for them. During the summer, the giraffes could have free roam between the indoor and outdoor facilities, which would give them shelter during various summer storms and the same control over the environment as mentioned before, which can decrease stress. If the Como Zoo were to expand their habitats with construction, the change would be a long-term solution and would cost a significant amount of money. But if they used the other methods I suggested, it could occur almost immediately and not at that much of a cost for them. In conclusion, the Como Zoo struggles with the space it can provide the animals because it is a zoo run on donations. For the giraffe, the keepers were providing them with some enrichment to provide sti mental stimulus, foraging, and provided the animals with a clean habitat. Despite this, the space was not ideal, the air quality was abysmal, and some of the giraffes had stereotypic behavior that was deemed as a ruination tool. Finally, they had some dangerous design choices in the outdoor enclosure, uh, especially with the slope and the visitor interactions with the animals. The Como Zoo should provide hiding spaces in both exhibits, provide a wider variety of enrichment that is actually utilized by those giraffes and doesn't cause the frustration, and they should try to expand the space provided by the giraffes by utilizing what they already have or expanding into new areas.